retirement, Social Security, and Medicare. As we build a living economy in local communities and measure success by the happiness and health of our neighbors, we'll discover that the false promises and fear-mongering from Wall Street concerning retirement were meaningless. Gradually aging out of the workforce in a living economy doesn't mean exiting from a community or losing the interdependence or support of that community. While we face a demographic crunch as the percentage of our population paying into Social Security drops and the portion of retirees increases, there are logical ways to address the issue. For one thing, when Social Security was created, the, the retirement age was set at 65, and the average longevity for a worker in this country was about 60. Today, average longevity is about 78. And a gradual rise in the retirement age seems completely appropriate to me. I think most people like me over 60 would agree. We don't expect to be shelved in our older years. We expect to use the wisdom we've, we've earned the hard way in our later years to continue to work in this economy. Medicare has been a remarkable success. To keep it solvent, we'll need to force down drug prices by shortening patent claims and banning consumer drug advertising. We don't need drugs advertised to patients. We also need to engage in a serious discussion about end-of-life issues. We spend far too much of our wealth keeping ourselves alive for a few extra weeks as our days on Earth, on Earth dwindle. This isn't about having someone else decide whether you live or die. It's about deciding for ourselves whether we'd rather spend our personal and national wealth on a handful of days on life support or pass that wealth to our children. And we should make Medicare available to everyone who wants to buy in. That's the public option missing from the new health care plan, and we should demand that right.